Bill is in Washington this week. Thursday, he's set to speak to freshman members of the House. But first, he stopped by the fold and shared his thoughts on education and cybersecurity. So your annual letter focused on the importance of measurement in making improvements. And uh, the Gates Foundation, at least domestically, focuses on education. So measurement plus education is a hot button thing. So I wonder what you think the ability of folks is to measure teacher progress and whether that's a doable thing and, and how we're doing it right and how we're doing it wrong. Well, we certainly measure students. Uh, we let them uh, graduate from high school. We admit them and don't admit them to college. Uh, we, we give them a college degree or don't give them a degree. So you'd think a system that was so intense in terms of measuring the students would also give the teacher some feedback what they're doing well, what they're not doing well. So I was fairly stunned to find that 95% of all teachers get no feedback at all. If you can just identify what they're not doing as well as they should and show them exemplars, you know, whether it's just a free internet video or some uh, professional development. But of course, the question is, can we fairly measure students, my, my, or I'm sorry, teachers. My sister's a third grade teacher in a tough community with behavior kids that are a problem. Some of them don't speak English. How do you, in an apples to apples way, actually find out who's a good teacher or not? Is that doable? Because many teachers say it's not. Yeah, we spent uh, many tens of millions on a study called Measuring Effective Teaching. And we track teachers at uh, different, different levels of quality, really intensely looked at the the very high performance teachers. And what we saw was that if you compared their ability to raise the test scores, if you had people sit in and observe the classroom, or if you surveyed the students, all three of those were highly predictive. And so if you create a system that combines all of those, uh, trained classroom observation, and you do have to invest in the training and the time, uh, doing the student survey in, a, in the right way, and then in the appropriate subjects, the test scores, yeah, you can find areas of practice. You can be diagnostic or, you know, how are they using the time in the classroom? Are they making various things interesting? Are they working well with the students who are behind or ahead? And teachers welcome that. They worry, will it be a system that, that works well? But once they're involved in it for several years, like many of our pilot districts, the, the reaction becomes uh, quite accepting. So why do you think it hasn't been done? It's, it's hard to do. And once you fall into a mode that uh, you, you don't have it or you worry that it's going to be used capriciously um, and you don't use it, and the U.S. was the best, it's only as we've fallen behind and seen other people using different tactics that we say, wow, we spend the most of any nation and yet uh, our results are quite poor. Our time is short, so I have to skip around a bit. Uh, earlier this week, the Director of National Intelligence called cyber attack the most dangerous immediate threat to the U.S. What do you make of that assessment, and, and what can we do, what should we be doing to guard against that possibility? Well, I think the, the cyber stuff's pretty important. Uh, you know, I think it's good that you know, he's not that worried about a nuclear attack, uh, you know, bioterrorism attack, you know, various other things. Well, it's a big statement to say a cyber attack's the biggest attack. Are you yeah, suggesting it it's maybe... A, it must mean on a relative basis that he views those other yeah. things as fairly low. The cyber thing, it's wonderful that more attention's going into that because whenever you get a critical infrastructure like the electricity system in the U.S., you know, you've got to really look at what resiliency that system has. And the cyber world today has a, a lot more investment to make to have, have the right resiliency. I wonder if it's a problem like, uh, like Wall Street, where there's no money in being a regulator. So the best minds aren't necessarily working on U.S. cybersecurity. They're in other parts of tech. Well, I don't think there's a compensation problem. That is, uh, you know, all the top IT firms are uh, hire security experts and pay them you know, high premiums for their capabilities. Uh, the government also brings in people with, with top skills in this area. So, the very attention being paid is, is quite appropriate, and I think it'll result in improvement. We solicited questions, and we got one that I wanted to give a chance. Ralph Cunningham asks, have you ever met the new pope, and is there a way the Vatican can partner with the Gates Foundation in a constructive way? Uh, no, I've never met uh, Pope Francis, I guess. Uh, Francis I. Uh, my wife is a Catholic and uh, involved in the church. Uh, I expect at some point she will meet them. The Catholic Church 
uh, is involved in some things that are very helpful in terms of health uh, things they do around the world. Uh, you know, there's some controversy in terms of their view on, on contraception and you know, whether they think that's something that, that should be made available, uh, but they do a, a lot of great things.